So, we've got a number one deluxe meal. Is there anything else I can get you? Yeah, I'd also like a good night's sleep. Maybe something like the I didn't struggle all night with my uncomfortable CPAP mask. Sir, I think what you're looking for is Inspire. It's an implant that works inside your body to treat sleep apnea without a CPAP. Come on. He sounds angry. Inspire, sleep apnea innovation. Inspire is not for everyone. Talk to your doctor to see if it's right for you. And review important safety information at InspireSleep.com. And good evening. This is Motac on Money, number one for your business and consumer news. You're on 790 KBC. I'm Frank Motac, and we are doing it live right here weeknights in the 5 o'clock hour. Motac on Money, five nights a week for you, live on the air right here on 790 KBC. Streaming live online worldwide at KBC.com and the on-demand Motac on Money podcast at KBC.com, Apple, iTunes, and all your favorite podcast platforms. We'll wrap up a winning week on Wall Street later this hour with investment expert Brian Perry and get an update on real estate tonight from economist Selma Hepp, chief economist at CoreLogic. But first, let's get right down to business here with Rick Caruso, business and civic leader, philanthropist, mega entrepreneur, former L.A. Police Commission president who commands the utmost respect in the business world here. He had the support of all the business groups in L.A. during his run for L.A. mayor last year. And he continues to speak out on the big issues impacting Los Angeles, including business, the economy, crime, homelessness, cleaning up the city. Rick Caruso, thank you very much for coming to the line here this evening. Thank you, Frank. Thanks for having me on. How are you doing? It's good to hear your voice. Likewise, Rick. Thank you very much. It's a beautiful evening here. And and, uh, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to join us here. And want to get your view of things here at the moment uh, on this beautiful evening uh, heading into the weekend here uh, in Los Angeles. Well, you know, as you said, the uh, from the stock market standpoint, the last couple of weeks we've had a lot of growth uh, in the market, uh, which is terrific. You know, and it appears that the economy is remaining uh, strong. And I, I, from what we see on our properties, the consumer is certainly resilient uh, and continues to spend money and continues to shop. And again, you see that in the numbers nationally in terms of retail sales. So, you know, overall, it's it's a pretty good picture. The concern that I have, which we talked about last time, and I'm sure most people have, you know, the cost of capital has gone up, the Fed monetary policy, uh, the raising of uh, the rates, um, you know, I don't agree with. Obviously, I don't get a vote, but I think there should have been more time to see what the total impact is on inflation. We know it's going down, which is terrific, um, and pause for another month or two. So I'm concerned that at some point in time, there's going to be a catch-up, and we're going to have these higher interest rates affecting the economy more than the Fed or any of us really wanted to. But we'll see how that plays out. But overall, I think it's a pretty uh, pretty good economy, and there's a lot of growth left, in my opinion. Nobody has a better handle on what's happening here uh, in Southern California in the business scene than you do, uh, Rick Caruso, certainly with the, the Grove, Americana brand, Commons of Calabasas. Palisades Village, and of course the magnificent Rosewood Miramar Hotel there in Montecito as well. Uh, how is the uh, consumer holding up uh, in the face of the inflation we've seen uh, coming off a 40-year high, of the higher interest rates, and and everything else that's been happening? Yeah, well, as you say, you know, interest rates. I think they're at a 22-year high, you know, and there may still be a likelihood of a recession, which would not be very peachy for the economy, right? We, we don't want to have that recession. But right now, what we're seeing on our properties, and we're seeing it up at Miramar, uh, at the Hotel the Rosewood, uh, up there that we have, and we're seeing it on our retail properties, there continues to be growth. Um, our NOI growth is up. Um, our sales per square foot continues to grow. Traffic on the properties Uh, continues to grow. With the Grove alone, it's up 20% over last year. Uh, Across the portfolio, it's about 15%. Palisades, the Commons, the Americana. Uh, And we're seeing that not only on pedestrian growth, but in vehicle uh, parking and people, the dwell time is longer. So they're coming onto the properties and they're staying and shopping and dining for a longer period of time, which obviously translates into greater sales. I think one of the effects that we're seeing also is most consumers today, if they have a home loan, you know, if they got a home loan a year or two ago, it is at a really, really low rate. And so they're getting the benefit of that low rate and having more free cash to spend. And now that's, I think, impacted the sales of homes, but it's certainly given more people 
free cash to go out and dine and go to the movies and, and go shopping. So we're happy with that. Uh, we are predicting we're going to have our best year uh, ever uh, if this trend continues. Uh, but that's what we're fo- forecasting right now. It was a big weekend last weekend. Uh, I saw a lot of people going to the Barbie movie there uh, at the Grove, right? Uh, a lot of concern about how uh, theaters would do uh, coming out of the pandemic. Uh, since you have theaters uh, on your property, how are they doing these days? The theaters are strong, Frank. I mean, you're right. We finally have great content. You know, there's no more restrictions about going to a movie, thank God. And now we've got content. So between the Mission Impossible, Barbie, Oppenheimer, et cetera, it's been very, very good uh, at all of our properties. The Promenade at Westlake, Americana Grove. Uh, I know AMC is very, very happy with their numbers. Both the Grove and the Americana are in the you know, top 10 of movie theaters in the country. So a lot of volume, great experience going to those which people want. AMC at the Grove, they invested and put in IMAX, which is fun uh, to watch, especially for Oppenheimer. I know it was filmed in an IMAX format. So they're doing all the right things to enhance the the guest experience. And that's the trick, you know, of my business. Uh, it's all about creating a great guest experience in what otherwise is a commodity. And, you know, to change a commodity from being uh, pretty boring and, and bland, you add and wrap it with a great experience. And that's what my team, I believe, does such a great job every day. On to your live with Rick Caruso. And Rick Caruso, give us your assessment here. Uh, you served as president of the police commission. And, and uh, certainly I think your accomplishments are uh, were not as highlighted as they should have been uh, during the, the mayoral campaign uh, when you brought in Bill Bratton and all that. And give us your assessment here of what's going on uh, with crime in Los Angeles, especially retail crime, which is still uh, running wild at this point. You know, Frank, it's just heartbreaking and it's wrong. And, you know, locking up ice cream counters and locking up ice cream areas in supermarkets now, this is nuts. And we got to start holding people accountable uh, if you steal something. And I think our crime is uh, is terrible. Uh, we got to do more. We've got to hire more officers. Uh, we got to have consequences, certainly consequences that uh, are fit for whatever the crime is. So, you know, you don't want to go crazy with that. It has to be relative. But we've got to get out of the business of saying, you know, if you steal under a certain amount of money, it's okay. It's it's not okay. And we've got to be confident, and our leaders have to be confident in saying it's not okay. Um, I worry about the migration out, out of California. I worry about the migration out of L.A. And I think people at every economic level are frustrated with the growing homeless uh, on the streets, uh, the growing encampments that we find, the amount of campers and vans that are parked along the streets, and uh, the growing crime. That uh, There's a feeling that you've got to sort of look over your shoulder when you're walking in certain areas and being careful. I was uh, with a – Dean and I were at dinner with a couple the other night, and they were talking about they were on a certain street, you know, in West L.A., and there was a young woman going jogging, and there was – a guy behind her, she wasn't aware, um, following her with a, a, a stick, a golf club. You know, it's it, these kind of scenes just are hurtful to our economy, our quality of life, and and we've got to get a handle on it. I hope our leadership certainly does. They need to. Every time I drive through the intersection of Hollywood and Vine, um, I think of you because during the uh... – during the campaign, uh, I spoke with you about how uh, Starbucks closed its store at one of the most famous intersections in the world because of, of crime and homelessness. And uh, I'm sure you would never have uh, permitted that to, to happen. Let me ask you this. I, I saw you I posted recently that you visited uh, Skid Row with your family and, and the Aparlos Ninos uh, organization there, which you support. Uh, tell us what you've, you've seen there recently. It's gotten worse. It, 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 it's gotten worse to the point that it was, it's always been horrific. It's a, uh, such a terrible way to have any human being live. The conditions that the leadership of the city have allowed in the county, 
No human being should live like that. But it's gotten measurably worse, and more families are ending up on the streets. My daughter was uh, heading down there also and called me, and she said, I'm, I'm crying I'm dry, as I'm driving down 6th Street. I'm seeing young kids, you know, outside a tent. This problem, Frank, I said it during the campaign. I'm going to say it till my dying day can be fixed. They, there, there's a path to success on this. It's going to take some hard work and good decisions. Some of them are going to be tough decisions, but we can't allow people to be living and dying on the streets. There's more and more people. I think we've all seen this that are now passed out on the streets. We have more drug addiction. And we know the numbers are rising because they published the report the numbers are rising. And um, it's, not a, it's not a lack of money. There's billions and billions of dollars that are being spent. They're just not being spent wisely. And because of that, um, we're going to have more and more problems on the streets. And there's more homeless and people that are mentally ill um, that are going into neighborhoods. And that's a very, a very bad thing for everybody. And we're speaking at a time when we're seeing a lot of uh, labor unrest here uh, in Los Angeles. They're calling it the hot uh, labor summer. And, in fact, the LAPD, I understand, uh, is without a contract since um, uh, just recently, right? Uh, so actually, since earlier this year now. And you have the actors on strike, the writers on strike, the hotel people on strike, and some uh, health care workers also on strike. Uh, give us your uh, impressions here of what's happening here with the cost of living um, so high in L.A., um, the unions uh, demanding more uh, compensation, uh, and and uh, we're seeing what's happening there with these uh, demonstrations in the streets. Yeah, listen, first and foremost, I really believe everybody deserves to be paid fairly and have good wages, and Los Angeles is expensive. Uh, and so you have to be fair to employees. That's something I believed in from the day I started my company, and Um, we have a lot of working poor in the city of Los Angeles, and that just isn't right. And, and that does have to change the same token. These strikes have a terrible toll on the economy, have a terrible toll on small businesses. You know, there's so many businesses that are impacted by the actor strike, the writer strike that are below the line, the truck drivers, the vendors, the caterers, the florists, the costume people. You know, and the the domino effect. So there needs to be, and I, I hope there is, an urgency. Um, and we need to get some of the senior people in the movie industry who will maybe retired, a little bit more agnostic at this point, to really lean in and help and bring this these sides together. Because I hear they're not even talking. And that's the same in the hotel industry with the workers. And... Um, it's, it's complicated, it's tough, but by God, we have to do it. It's such a big part of our economy. And again, the collateral impact to other small businesses, uh, I really worry about that. And uh, so hopefully they get together and they solve this quickly. And trying to make uh, California more uh, business friendly is certainly uh, still an uphill fight. Um, I understand one of the big uh, insurance companies eliminating uh, business, uh, cover- Liberty Mutual, I, I believe, and and some of the other uh, insurance companies have been uh, cutting back on uh, coverages here. Uh, what, what is your reaction to uh, to that? And also just to turn the business climate around here in uh, Southern California. Well, listen, I think, you know, you're right, Frank. And I, I've talked to uh, lenders in Los Angeles in particular is Redline. They don't want to do business in L.A. They worry about lending in L.A. On a commercial basis for businesses or for development or whatnot, because of the crime issue and the homeless issue, um, it's the same with the state of California. We've got to move more to the middle on who we're electing uh, in this city and the state and the county. You know, moderate left, moderate right, moderate center, whatever the case is, whatever you want to call it, and people that have an appreciation and an understanding that. Good, healthy business policies that allow people to grow their business, hire more people, create jobs, which in turn creates more taxes for the city, the county, and the state in order to put back in the economy for infrastructure and making our city safer for police and for fire. My God, we need to hire uh, more paramedics and, and fire personnel. They, they have to realize that that's the nexus. And uh, the weather alone is not going to keep people in business 
in the state of California, as great and as beautiful and as wonderful it is. And I love California and I love L.A. But we've got to grow. We've got to grow the base here and it can be done. We've done it in the past and we can do it again. But it's going to take literally electing the right leadership that understands that. And I this goes back to what people have to get up and vote and they have to make a difference in our city, state and county and federal government in getting the right leadership and holding that leadership accountable, including let's make L.A. and the state of California business friendly. Well, we certainly appreciate that you're uh, speaking out on these important issues, especially here live with us here on 790 KBC. Uh, by the way, I can tell you have the support of many cat lovers in L.A., and I know you have the support of dog lovers, too. And before we let you off the hook here, um, of course, the dog lovers uh, and all love your uh, golden retriever. So you have to give us an update now on how, how Hudson, the golden retriever, is doing. <laughs> my, my buddy Hudson, thank you, Frank. He's, he's sitting right next to me here chewing on his favorite treat. So Hudson's having a great day. We're keeping him nice and cool. We got a nice warm day in LA that we're all enjoying, but uh, we got to protect our, got to protect our four legged animals. Uh, We've got signs actually around all of our properties reminding people that, you know, to be paw friendly because the surfaces around the city are hot and we got to protect our dogs and they can get overheated, but Hudson's doing great. And uh, I love hanging out with him. So it's a good thing. Fantastic. Well, Rick Caruso, thank you very much. We wish you a beautiful evening and a great weekend and look forward to many more uh, conversations with you live on the air here on Motac on Money on 790 KBC. Thank you, Frank. Everybody have a great weekend. It's going to be a beautiful weekend in L.A. Yes, sir. Thank you very, very much. Rick Caruso live with us here tonight. Don't give in to that constant joint pain. Take control. Take back your quality of life today with help from QC Kinetics. It's Frank Motank here. QC Kinetics is helping people every day here and all across the country with their amazing non-surgical treatments that repair and restore damaged joint tissue. They use the latest advances in regenerative medicine, taking your own body's healing agents and concentrating them right in the area where you have that agonizing pain. This incredible non-invasive approach helps you take back control of your body, relieving the pain in your knees, hips, shoulders, or back. No invasive surgery, no harmful drugs or steroids, and no downtime. Summertime needs to be about having fun out there, making memories, golfing, hiking, enjoying playing with your dog, you name it. Take control now and start living pain-free again. Call QC Kinetics, locations in Glendale, the city of Orange, Mission Viejo, and now also in Costa Mesa. Call 213-997-PAIN. 213-997-PAIN. Again, that's 213-997-PAIN. All right, get the saxophone out. 790 KBC welcomes Boney James. Coming to the Saban Theater, October 13th. Tickets are on sale now at AXS.com. And right now, Caller 9 wins at 1-888-790-5222. And get a pair of tickets to the show if you're Caller 9. Call now, 1-888-790-5222. Motac on Money continues here in 790 KBC. A winning day and a winning week for the stock market. It was a big week, of course, with the Federal Reserve uh, with its uh, big announcement on the economy and decision on interest rates, raising rates again by another quarter percentage point. Fed funds rate up another quarter percent, which puts the prime lending rate charged by major banks now at 8.5%, impacting business and consumer loans, including home equity lines of credit. The Dow coming in for a closing gain of 177 points today at 35,459. The S&P 500 at 45 at 4,582. The Nasdaq up 267 points at 14,316. The Dow slipped yesterday, breaking a 13-session winning streak, but up again today. So um, up 15 out of the last, um, let's see, up uh 14 over the last 15 trading sessions. We did skip a winner yesterday. Latest reports on the economy showing the cost of goods and services rose 0.2% in June as inflation eased a bit again, according to uh, the latest reading. Core price pressures, excluding food and energy, eased a bit from a 0.3% rise in May, according to the Personal Consumption Expenditures Index, which we understand is the Fed's favorite inflation gauge. At the same time, the rise in employment cost index for the second quarter slowed to 1%, from 1.2%. Consumers' outlook brightening a bit thanks to the still robust job picture out there officially and waning inflation with the Consumer Sentiment Index from the University of Michigan out today hitting a 22-month high. Federal Reserve, of course, raising rates again this past week to fight elevated inflation and aiming to cool the economy more without triggering a recession. And we had a great assessment just a few moments ago from 
Business leader Rick Caruso on the air with us here just a few moments ago. We also got the latest earnings news, including from ExxonMobil, the oil giant, Procter & Gamble, and others. One of the busiest weeks for companies reporting second quarter earnings. And we'll be talking more about the uh, earnings and the whole works coming up here shortly with investment expert Brian Perry. Intel in focus today at nearly 7% after that Dow component reported its earnings news that showed PC and data center sales beat analyst expectations. Ford back in the spotlight down today by about 3.5% after the automaker had a beat and raised a quarter, but uh, spooked investors by shifting its EV production goals, according to Market Watch, as consumer tastes uh, continue to evolve and not so much on the Ford EV product, apparently. Tupperware brands are moving higher today by nearly 4% with the stock soaring for a weekly gain of 242%. Tupperware in the spotlight, and Palantir Technology shares at more than 10% after a Wedbush analyst here in Los Angeles described the company as the uh, Lionel Messi of AI and the golden track to success after initiating coverage on the software maker with an outperform rating. Taking a look at the uh, cryptos now, we see uh, Bitcoin at the moment down about $10 at 29,310 Ethereum is uh, just about um, 10 cents higher now at 1876 And uh, Dogecoin price, let's bring that one up here, at just about $0.08. Cents. Motega Money continues here on 790 KBC. Winning week for the stock market with the Dow nearly 1% for the week. The S&P 500 up 1% and the NASDAQ up 2% for the week. Let's bring in Brian Perry now, investment expert, chief investment strategist and portfolio manager at Mint Asset Management, also author of the 25% cash machine. Brian Perry, thank you very much for taking the call. A lot to unpack uh, this week. Uh, take it from the top uh, and give us your assess assessment of the market action here this week. Thanks, Brian. Great to be with you. And it was a, a banner week here for the market in general. Um, I'll be, yesterday was a, a, a tough day, uh, which gave people a lot of uh, angst as to whether or not we'd seen a blow off top. Uh, today's PCE number you know, uh, alleviated a lot of those concerns. You know, the bears, some of the bears are really thrown in the towel here. Uh, and, and comments from Jay Powell here uh, during the uh, Fed policy uh, statement that he thought a recession would be, um, you know, be uh, averted really brought uh, the, you know, the bulls back into the play here. Uh, you know, the market, you know, tries to confound as many people as possible. And 2023 is historic uh, in this whole, you know, positioning of recession on, recession off, uh, and, and whether or not, you know, we're going to see a slowdown or whether... Uh, you know, we're going to see a big pullback. It just, it, it's really been a confusing year for, for a lot of professionals. And what's happened here is, you know, it, it, inflation internals, you know, we're, we're on a glide path lower on the front end of the year. And we've talked about that. And, <clears throat> and so therefore, uh, those numbers are starting to play out in here. And uh, lately, I think they're going to change here going forward. And I'll comment on that in a minute. But corporations were given fair notice, you know, that uh, there was going to be a very aggressive rate hike cycle here a year ago. And, you know, I have a high belief in corporate resilience here. And they really ran their expenses very well here. They were tight, you know, all this last year. And they've been able to deliver on earnings here and despite uh, the slower top line sales growth. And that's that's the the part that a lot of investors didn't get right is is that you know, and, uh, corporations are are very savvy about about controlling expenses here so they can deliver bottom line growth. Um, every time this year that the market has wobbled, investors and traders you know have been ready to short and sell this market, and we even saw that uh, this this uh, yesterday uh, with the you know the, there was a big reversal you know Nasdaq up 200 then closed down 77. It wobbled yesterday and that, you know, and when yields across the Treasury curve, you know. Former Navy SEAL Sean Ryan shares real stories from real people from all walks of life on The Sean Ryan Show. Dr. Michael Bagnell. In the brain, we have networks that work together. Think about like a toggle switch. Well, in the default mode network where we have a sense of relaxing, taking things in, it's also where we have a hope generated for our future. Someone goes to military service, sees extremely traumatic things. They just seen so much damage. They may end up shutting down this Fault Mode Network. The Sean Ryan Show on YouTube or wherever you listen. Uh, breached four percent, so that was before today's uh, you know um, tame PCE report, the uh, Personal Consumption Expenditures uh, Inflation Report, which is the Fed's favorite report. And it feels like people are ready again to sell and and not embrace you know what has been a really strong year-to-date rally as a quote a new bull market. Uh, I'm not sure about that yet either. But the point is, there's a lot of people that are not in this market. They're still sitting in cash. 
and Treasury bills at 5%, wondering where this big correction is coming from. So with that being said, and the professional strategists out there like Mike Wilson of Morgan Stanley and Mike Hartnett of B of A, these are very influential, uh, you know, um, chief market strategists. They, they've been, you know, convincing their buy side and institutional clientele to, to sit tight. And I know there's a lot of angst out there and a lot of impatience because this market looks like it wants to continue to carry higher. So going forward, I think that, you know, what we're seeing here in the last month, Frank, is, you know, um, we're seeing a spike in inflation again here. The CRB index is back above uh, 300, you know, which is going back to um, over a year ago in terms of its where, where it's currently trading at here. Energy prices are higher again. Rates look like they're moving, you know, north again here. So I think that the the July inflation data, which will be reported in August, is going to be hot. And, and I think that this is really where, you know, investors should be, you know, ride the FOMO rally here. That's fine. And, and look for people to, you know, everybody into the pool, you know, as we go into the latter part of earnings season here with, the, you know, a lot of big names reporting. But I'd be um, looking to lighten up and hedge going into Labor Day here because September and October, I think you're going to start to, you know, as, as everybody, you know, marches into this market here, I think that the market will be ripe for a, uh, a 10 to 15 percent pullback. Inflation certainly on display again at Southern California gas pumps with a regular above $5 a gallon here on average here in the Los Angeles area. We're seeing the price of oil uh, above $80 a barrel here at the moment. Uh, what about the, the oil names here? We did hear from uh, ExxonMobil today uh, on its uh, earnings news. Uh, and um, what about uh, what about the oil stocks here and, and where uh, the price of oil goes from here? Well, you've got you know, a, a collaboration between Russia and Saudi Arabia and OPEC cutting back on production here in order to elevate prices here. Uh, and that's, you know, that's what's happened. And, and it's, it's working on their behalf. If, and so uh, really what, was led, uh, what led this oil rally here was not so much Exxon, but it was the, the drillers. Uh, the oil service stocks have really vaulted higher. And they're usually a harbinger of better things to come for the big integrateds. And, and so, you know, even though the numbers were kind of soft on Exxon, but they were much better for Chevron and other names in that, like uh, Imperial Oil, IMO, had, had excellent numbers here. So not everything has to be Exxon and Chevron. You know, there's, there's other names in this business here that are executing properly. And, and there's a lot of managing of hedges and futures and all kinds of forward pricing that goes on in the oil business, Frank. So you got to pick your spots well. So IMO looks best in class right now for people that want to say, oh, I want to okay. be in an oil stock. Uh, that looks good. All right. And the banks were back in focus with uh, PacWest based here in L.A. Uh, soaring on a, uh, that $1.1 billion buyout deal with, with Bank of California. What about these uh, regional banks now? I'm a seller. Uh, I think you, you. I think you sell into this uh, this uh, rally here into the regional banks. I think there's going to be a lot of trouble ahead here for, uh, you know, uh, tightening credit conditions as well as commercial real estate. I think there's. Uh, this has been a honeymoon of a rally here uh, because it, a lot of them haven't reported their earnings and their numbers and, and their forward guidance yet. So uh, it's it's been a good ride on the back of J.P. Morgan and some of the bigger banks. But I would be a, a, a better seller into this rally of, of the regional banks. All right. And any other specific places, Brian uh, Perry, where you are putting money now and or taking it off the table? Well, sure. Uh, you know, you, aside from, you know, the, the Magnificent Seven here, which are running higher here, and that's okay to stay along those names. But, you know, names like um, uh, Fortinet, which is a cybersecurity company, FTNT, should have really good numbers here. Unity, uh, symbol U, uh, software company that's embedded with uh, uh, Apple Computer in, in, their, uh, in their, um, their new headset area here. Uh, IT, which is Samsara, which is an AI-driven logistics company, which is really making a lot of waves in there. And Trex, which is the, you know, this, the outdoor decking company here as uh, home builders are having a, just a banner year here. And I'd start to buy some gold in here, Frank. Uh, you know, IAU, which is the iShares Gold ETF, uh, I think gold is going to start to push higher here. It's been in a trading range for a while now, and I think gold is, is going to start to move higher along with, with Bitcoin here. BITO, if people want to buy a, an ETF, that's the pro shares of Bitcoin. Coming off, um, airlines and regional banks. Uh, the airlines have looked like they've that balloon has popped here, and there's just one story after another of just you know really bad management at the at the airports and and within the airlines themselves. And I think that travel is going to start to wane here in the in the third quarter here, and and that's a trade to take off. All right, we're going to be transitioning to real estate uh, shortly. I know you've been watching what's happening in uh, commercial real estate, which continues to be uh, a tough spot uh, in the economy here at the moment. Uh, what about the uh, the commercial real estate names, uh, and what do you see ahead there? Uh, not a heck of a lot. I mean, if you're going to buy in commercial real estate here, I think you still got to stay with the the, uh, you know, the apartment, um, you know, multifamily housing, you know, like Arbor Real Arbor Realty, ABR, is, is made a move higher here. That's trading 
um, with a that's a more of a, a finance company for the multifamily housing area. It pays a nine and a half, nine point four percent dividend yield here. So, um, uh, and if you want to be in the physical side, then you can look at Avalon Bay, uh, which is you know the largest of the uh, apartment dwellers here, because uh, you know affordability for housing is still uh, way out of reach for a lot of people here, and and these stocks are starting to push higher here, the the big apartment op, uh, developers. So I think that that's okay if you're going to you know if you want push button real estate as I call it, you know with your, you know with the click of a mouse you can get in and out, um, and I think that's where where people need to have that flexibility and liquidity. Uh, it's okay, but as long as rates are pushing higher here, and I think they will push higher. It's going to still be a stress point here for most real estate assets. All right, Brian. Well, thanks for uh, coming to the line this evening to wrap up a a big week. Um, And we look forward to speaking with you again really soon. That is investment expert Brian Perry, chief investment strategist and portfolio manager at Mint Asset Management and author of the 25% cash machine. Brian, have a great weekend, and thanks very much uh, for taking the call here. Okay, do the same, Frank. Thanks Thanks so much. Thank you very much. It is jarring to have a car accident out there and hard to think clearly when you're hurt. So my friend, attorney Clark Fielding of Fielding Law has created something to help you. It's a guide called Be Prepared Before a Motor Vehicle Accident. The guide is one page, fits right there in your glove compartment, gives you everything you need in case you are hurt in an accident. Go to ClarkTheSharkLaw.com and download your free one-page guide and keep it right there in your glove box and put Clark Fielding's number in your phone, too, under the word accident. So all you have to do is hit the number when you need them. Tell your family and friends to do the same. So if you're hurt in an accident, call the one we all trust, Attorney Clark Fielding. The number to call is 833-88-SHARK. That's 833-88-SHARK, 833-88-SHARK. And be sure to download the Be Prepared Before a Motor Vehicle Accident Guide at ClarkTheSharkLaw.com. That's ClarkTheSharkLaw.com. Again, ClarkTheSharkLaw.com. Motag on Money continues here in 790 KABC. Time to focus on real estate here in Los Angeles. Looks like home prices did dip a bit uh, recently as uh, mortgage rates continue to remain elevated, coming off a 20-year high, though, that we saw last year. We are seeing um, the Fed bumping up short-term rates again this week. That impacts the fixed, not the fixed rate, but the adjustable rate mortgages. So they've moved higher this week. Let's get an update now from the chief economist at CoreLogic. Selma Hepp is with us live on the air right now. CoreLogic, of course, releases the authoritative reports on home prices uh, here in Southern California, all across the country. Selma, thank you very much for joining us live here this evening. I I know you just gave a a great presentation on real estate at a symposium in uh, San Diego. And and, uh, give us an update uh, on how you're seeing uh, things play out here uh, as far as home prices are concerned here in the Los Angeles area, first of all. Yeah, so as you mentioned, Frank, first of all, thanks for having me again. Uh, as you mentioned, home prices on an annual basis did dip, uh, but that really reflects declines in price in home prices that we saw last year. What has been happening since the beginning of this year, particularly since uh, mortgage rates started coming down, is that we are seeing boost in home prices again, and they are actually up uh, consecutively four months in a row now, and that means a four percent cumulative increase in home prices since the beginning of the year. So, you know, if we continue at this pace, all of the losses that we saw in Los Angeles over the last year are going to be made up for uh, by, by fall of this year. That's very interesting. And we also heard this week from the chief economist at the National Association of Realtors who said the, the housing recession is over based on uh, what you just said, that um, looks like um, we also saw pending home sales up uh, for the fourth month in a row as well. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, while home prices are doing pretty well, uh, sales activity, unfortunately, is at some 20 year low in California. Um, and, you know, it's low as it's been, it's been since 2007. So uh, one, one constraint that we have locally here is that we don't have enough inventory. So even though the buyers are coming back into the market, we don't have enough inventory to meet that demand. And at the same time, you know, we, we are significantly constrained in terms of new construction. So there is not that inventory to be sold. So unfortunately, while in some markets, pending sales and, 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 and closed sales are rebounding we are not seeing as much of that happening here in southern california all right certainly uh, real estate very sensitive to uh, interest rates uh, with, with the rates uh, where they are right now uh, uh, right now we see the uh, average 30-year fixed uh, the freddie max survey has it at 6.81 percent the 15-year fixed now at 6.11 percent uh, where do you see mortgage rates uh, go from here and uh, where do you see uh, prices go from here 
Yeah, so we are certainly hoping for mortgage rates to give us some breathing room going forward. Uh, in many forecasts, do have home uh, mortgage rates uh, gradually declining. But unfortunately, because of this persistent inflation pressures and Federal Reserve's actions, uh, they do remain elevated and they will remain elevated for longer. So at this point, we are anticipating mortgage rates, at least a 30-year fix, to, to mid sixes or, you know, between 6.3, 6.5, say, uh, by the end of the year. But that is still about 50 basis points higher uh, than we were anticipating a few months ago when we were seeing some improvement in inflation. Though, you know, I think the report to the, today, PCE report on inflation was pretty uh, favorable in, in thinking about what they're going to, Federal Reserve at least, is going to do uh, uh, over the next few meetings. Uh, but what that means for home sales activity, you know, I, I, I think uh, uh, we are still, um, you know, continue to see pretty low activities, particularly given this, this inventory constraint uh, that is not going to uh, improve uh, over the next year at least. All right. What about the rest of California? The Bay Area has seen uh, price pressure, right, uh, as people have been fleeing uh, that area and San Diego um, has also seen a bit of a dip, and, and Los Angeles, you mentioned uh, a, as well. Um, what about, uh, looks like California, of course, has been um, famous for people leaving uh, these days to, to other markets. Yeah. Uh, what do you see headed in these uh, big California markets? And, and, and zooming out to the bigger picture, um, where, where are some of the other big uh, price gains uh, that you've seen uh, nationwide? Yeah, so, I mean, similarly to L.A., Bay Area and San Diego overall did see a home price declines over the last year. But now with this with this momentum over the last few months, they're both gaining quite a bit of a home price appreciation again. And both are supposed to, I mean, even in Los Angeles, too, is supposed to end uh, a year from now with some 6 to 7% home price appreciation. So it certainly doesn't really feel like uh, a lot of people are leaving, though the people are leaving. But I I think the issue, the bigger issue, again, is the inventory uh, rather than how many how many, how many people at this point are leaving. But, you know, if you zoom out and you look at the other markets across the U.S., uh, all of the northwest uh, and uh, basically west coast and mountain west has seen similar declines in home prices over the last year because mortgage rates uh, have a, a larger impact in more unaffordable markets. Um, so they are all, you know, now resetting to some extent and bouncing back. But the markets that are really strong at the moment are markets that actually didn't do so well or, or were relatively um, a, a slower during the pandemic. And those are markets in, in, in uh, Midwest, uh, markets, for example, like Missouri, Ohio. Uh, and we see some strength in Northeast and, and New England, New Hampshire, New Jersey, you know, markets where we thought that a lot of people were leaving from as well. Uh, particularly, you know, especially if you look at uh, sort of where um, population declines have been. It's, it hasn't been just California. It has also been Midwest Chicago. It has also been um, uh, New York, for example. But in all of those markets now, home prices are rebounding because, again, you know, I think uh, inventory issue is outweighing uh, the, the lack of uh, or, or is outweighing any 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 of that uh, migration pressure. Yeah, no, tough. Tough to take. Affordability and availability uh, still not looking good, certainly here in uh, this area. Selma, well, thank you very much for that comprehensive update tonight. That is Selma Hep, Chief Economist at CoreLogic. Selma, wish you a great weekend, and thanks very much uh, for joining us live here tonight. Thank you so much for having me, Frank. All right. You're very, very welcome, and look forward to uh, your updates here. With CoreLogic, of course, uh, providing the authoritative updates on what's happening on real estate here in Los Angeles, as well as nationwide. And this is Motec on Money. Thank you very much for listening. We'll be back again on Monday in the 5 o'clock hour. You can also bring up the Motec on Money podcast on demand at kbc.com. Stay tuned for the Honorable Dennis Zine hosting the 790 KBC News Blitz coming your way next. This is Motec on Money on 790 KBC.